Hey everyone, welcome back. So I had a comment on one of the past videos saying, can you uh, go through coding a logistic regression from scratch? And I think it's a pretty good idea. Um, so it's not as straightforward as coding a linear regression from scratch, but there's still a lot of valuable things we can learn here. So first let's go through a little bit of the intro math to logistic regression, just enough so that we can code the solution to find the best parameters. Uh, but if you want a full description of the theory behind logistic regression, I'll put some of my videos related to that in the description below. So as a recap, logistic regression is a classification model. Specifically here we'll use it for binary classification. And it tries to model the log of the odds ratio, which is the thing you see on the left hand side of the equal sign here, as some linear combination of your features. So for us we're just going to use one feature so we can visualize stuff and keep things simple here. That's going to be beta naught plus beta 1 x. We can rearrange this equation and solve for p instead, p being the probability that some observation belongs to class 1 instead of class 0. And p is equal to this quantity e to the beta naught plus beta 1x divided by 1 plus the same thing. So you probably saw this if you watched the uh, theoretical videos we had on logistic regression. Now we can continue because this was just for one example. Of course when you have a larger data set we want to form something called the likelihood and the likelihood, in a nutshell, even before talking about it mathematically, is just what's the probability, given that this model we're about to build is true, that we would observe the data that we actually observe. And so it's going to be a multiplication from i equals 1 to n, n being the number of data points we have, of pi to the power of yi times 1 minus pi to the power of 1 minus yi. And again, the description of it is simply just what's the probability that this is the data that I actually observed. Now, because we're going to be actually writing code here, we might run into issues with numerical underflow, where if you multiply a bunch of probabilities together, then you might send the thing to exactly zero because we don't have enough precision. So we're going to take the log of the likelihood instead, so it's easier to work with in computers, and because it gives us the same solution in the end. So taking the log of this likelihood, called LL, or log likelihood, the product becomes a sum, and we have logs of probabilities instead. And so the form looks like this now. Now the last step is that we don't have a closed form solution to find these betas, beta naught and beta one. So we have to rely on something called gradient ascent, which is related to gradient descent. It's just that in this case we want to find the maximum log likelihood, so we're going to be ascending. And uh, the main step of using gradient descent or gradient ascent is finding the partial derivative of your uh, objective function, here the log likelihood, with respect to all of your parameters. And um, I won't show how I got these, those are more in the theoretical videos, but if we take the partial derivative of log likelihood with respect to beta naught, we get this nice looking sum. And this sum has a kind of cool interpretation, I think, because yi is either 0 or 1, that's the actual label of the observation and pi is a probability that goes between 0 and 1. And so for doing the sum over all data points of the actual label minus the predicted probability, then we would like that to be small, right? So this in a sense is kind of the error between our truth and our model's predictions. And if we take the uh, partial derivative of log likelihood with respect to beta 1, we get a very similar looking form, it's just that we have a x1 tagged on to each observation as well. So that was all the theory we have to get through. In fact, we're only really going to be working with these two last equations here. So our goal is to maximize the log likelihood using gradient ascent. So first I generate some uh, just kind of dummy data that we're going to use to see if our model is working. So I run these guys. I generate the data in this cell. Data looks like this after it's been randomized. So we have some x coordinate and we have the label y, which is either class 1 or class 0. I can show you a scatter plot of it. So here's all the observations belonging to class 1, and at the bottom, all the observations belonging to class 0. So we see there's actually a little bit of overlap as well. And so here's where we're actually going to do the code with me part. The uh, idea is that we are going to run this algorithm where we start from some starting points, some initial beta naught, some initial beta 1. Let's say we're going to be 0, 0. And then what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the gradient at that point, and the gradient again is the direction of maximum increase of our objective function, the log likelihood. We're going to calculate the gradient using these formulas up here, 
and then we are going to update our current beta naught beta 1 in the direction of that gradient. That's the high level idea. Now let's get into the weeds of the coding here. I think to keep everything vectorized here, it'll be best to calculate a vector of probabilities and then subtract uh, that from the vector of true labels. So in the function we're trying to write, we have the current betas, that's the current beta naught beta 1, that's just a vector of two items, and we have the data, which is a data frame that looks like this, has the x's and the y's. So the main thing we need to calculate is these predicted probabilities. And let's scroll up here. To calculate these predicted probabilities, it looks like it's in this form. So I think simply we'll need to do beta naught plus beta 1 times x first. Let's do that first. So we're going to do uh, np.exponent of cur betas 0 plus cur betas 1 times data dot x. Let me explain what I just did. So this cur beta 0 is beta naught plus cur betas 1, which is beta 1, and then data dot x is a vector of all of our x coordinates for all of our data points. And then I do np dot exp, which is taking e to the power of that. Okay, so I'm going to call that uh, numerator. I call that numerator because that is exactly the numerator of this predicted probabilities here. And to get the predicted probabilities, it would be numerator divided by 1 plus the same quantity, which is numerator. So, scrolling down, we're going to get the probabilities is equal to numerator, numerator, divided by 1 plus numerator. Does that check out? Yeah. And so that's our predicted probabilities. And so now if we want to get the gradient with respect to beta naught, then it's simply going to be the true labels minus the predicted probabilities, and we add up all those differences together. So let's do that. So we'll do partial uh, zero, so this is the partial with respect to beta zero, and this is going to be np dot sum of the true labels, which is data dot y, minus the predicted probabilities, which is this vector p. And yeah, that should be good. And then partial one is going to be very similar. It's going to be true labels minus p, but then times all the x values. So let's do that. It's going to be np dot sum of data dot y minus p times data dot x. Cool. And then how about we return np dot array of partial 0 and partial 1. So we're returning the two gradients now. Um, okay, cool. And so we're going to start our betas at 0, 0. That'll be just some arbitrary starting point. Diff is going to be the amount by which we update the current betas, so we're going to keep doing that while diff is big enough. If diff drops below a certain level, here I've set it as 0 0.001, then we're going to consider the algorithm finished because we're not updating our current betas by that much, so we're going to say it converged. And eta is going to be our learning rate. Um, you can play around with the learning rate. The bigger it is, the larger steps you're going to take during this gradient ascent. The smaller it is, the more fine-grained steps you'll take. But that also means that it's going to take longer for us to get to the solution. So while diff is greater than 0 0.001, let's get the gradient of the log likelihood. So calculate gradient of log likelihood, put in the cur betas, throw in the data here. And so this is going to be called grad. And now we're going to get diff is equal to absolute value of grad dot sum. So grad again has two items. It has the partial with respect to beta naught and the partial with respect to beta 1. What I do is take the absolute value of those and then I add those together. And again, that's going to be equal to diff because if that uh, change is going to be very small, then we've converged and we can stop this algorithm. If that change in absolute terms is still large, then we need to keep going with this algorithm. And then we need to update the betas, right? So we're going to do cur betas plus equals eta, the learning rate, times grad. Okay, so let's give that a run. Hopefully this doesn't take super long. Okay, so that was taking quite a while. Uh, let's diagnose and see what's going on. Since the whole thing is dependent on the value of diff, let's just print diff and see if it's decreasing fast. It is decreasing, definitely. I think the problem is it's not decreasing fast enough. Our threshold is 0 0.001. What if we set our threshold as 0 0.01 instead, just so we get it to converge? 
So let's put that away and then I think it should converge in a more reasonable amount of time now. This is a good place to note though that all the code we're writing is not optimized obviously. So in any real solution you're going to use the built-in functions but this does show you how it's working behind the scenes. Okay, so it finished. It did take quite a while though. So let's take a look at the sigmoid that we generated. So this is the sigmoid that we've generated. So these are our data points up here, data points down here, and this is the sigmoid that's been generated. It looks like a decent fit to the data. Let's compare it against the built-in logistic regression in scikit-learn, and we should get the same answer or a similar close enough answer. So here we're using the built-in logistic regression function. I had to put penalty equals none because I learned that there's a built-in regularization in scikit-learn's logistic regression, which is actually a good thing. Uh, but since we didn't code any regularization and we want to make sure we get the same solution, I had to put penalty equals none here. And so notice that took a lot shorter than ours. So obviously they've done some optimization that we haven't done, surprise. Uh, but let's make sure we get a close solution. So their beta naught was 20.5 and their beta one was negative 17.8. R was 19.2 sort of close to 20.5, and our beta 1 was negative 16.8, which is sort of close to this. What I suspect is that if we had taken this difference and we had made it a lower threshold so that it took longer to converge or actually does converge to what we want, we would get closer to these true values. And so let's take a look at the sigmoid for the built-in version. This is the built-in sigmoid and this is our sigmoid. So they look pretty much identical to the human eye. So I would say that we've arrived at the same solution as them. It is a little bit off, definitely, but I think that's just because of some of the choices we made with the algorithm's convergence. But the main thing I wanted to get across is that if you want to code a logistic regression from scratch just to understand how it works, then it's going to amount to doing a gradient ascent using these gradients. And if you are living in higher dimensions, so if you have not just a x1, but a x2, x3, x4, lots of features, then you can calculate very similar gradients and just update your algorithm accordingly. But this is how you would code a logistic regression from scratch. I hope you learned a little bit about that. Uh, if you did, please like and subscribe for more videos just like this, and I'll see you next time.